Hello, this video is going to be on class two sectional matrix and all the different scenarios that we run into when working with them. So let's just begin with your simple MO or DO setup. So here you have a tooth that's prepped as an MO on tooth number 18. We put in this thing called a sectional matrix and we put in this thing called a wedge or sometimes we call them a point. And that's how it looks looking from the occlusal. And this is how the setup looks like from, from the buckle. Then what we do is put in what's called a bitine ring. Okay, this thing called a bi tine, bi means two, tines are these things right here. So the tines are these little vertical components. And what this does, when we put this in place, is it helps separate the teeth just a little bit. You see, if we didn't put this in and we just were hoping that this wedge would do the trick, is that we're hoping that teeth would spread apart, we put in the filling, and we get done uh, curing the filling, we take out this sectional matrix. Uh, we don't want there to be any space. We want the teeth to actually still be in contact. So when we floss or when the patient flosses, it's a nice tight contact. And so we found that if you just do the wedge alone, that's not enough force to put those teeth or to force those teeth apart. We have to actually use this bitine ring to push on that extra little bit that's necessary in order to create a nice flossing contact when we're finished. Okay, so that was the MO or just the DO setup. What if we're going to do a tooth that has both MO and a distal component or an MOD setup. This is what that would look like. So again, here's this tooth that's prepped. It both has the mesial and the distal. We have to do both of them. We're going to put in that filling uh, at all at one time. So we have to get the walls built on both sides. So it's pretty simple. We put it in the same kind of setup. It's just that one's on the mesial, one's on the distal, and we put in those wedges, or we call them points in my office. And that's the setup there. Now, the bitine rings, when you do this, since we're going to be putting in two of them, one has to be taller than the other. Otherwise, they just run into each other. So we have a short and we have a tall. We measure that from here to here. The tine here is short. This one here is longer. And so the short one goes in first and the long one goes in over the top. Let me show you how we assemble that. So again, those uh, matrices and wedges are in place. We put the short bitine ring in first. There it is. And then we put the tall one in second. And let me actually show you this picture. This probably shows it better from the buckle. You can see this is a short ring. And then on top of it, not running into it or running, you know, on top of it or running into it while sitting on top of it, we have the longer one. So now we have this setup where we can go in and place our filling and have the wedging of, that, of both of these teeth, both the tooth in the front and the tooth behind are being wedged out of the way so we can get are filling in place. Okay, what about when we have two interproximal fillings that are facing one another? We call that a back-to-back -back setup. So here we go. We have um, this tooth that needs a filling and this one needs a filling. Uh, just imagine for a moment that isn't prepped right there. Uh, we have to put in this filling and now we're putting two matrices that are going to be actually touching each other at the same time. So how do we handle that one? Well, uh, we're going to put in, in my office, we're going to put in this one and that one with a wedge and just put in one ring. Um, we were not going to just put in one and just leave this one off. The reason why we don't do that is that if we just were to put in this, say this one, this, um, the one on the second molar and leave this one off, when we put this bitine ring in, there's a tendency for this convex part of this to actually bow over too far and it would impede or get in the space of this guy right here. So we want this kind of balanced out. So we put in both of them at the same time. What happens is they kind of balance each other out so that when we get our final fillings, when they're both in place, they're gonna have the right contact point. Okay, so those are the three different setups. We have just your regular standard setup like this. We have the MOD setup, which was uh, that one. Oops, sorry, that one. And then we have the back-to-back -back setup, which is that one. Okay, now let's go over a couple of different miscellaneous points when dealing with sectional matrices. First of all, how do we put in the wedge or the point? If you notice this wedge has kind of a, like a canoe shape, you know, if you kind of look like a profile of a canoe, it comes out to this tip and then it curves back. Okay, this part goes towards the occlusal, this part goes along the gum line. So just slide it in just like that. Also, the sectional matrix itself, it bows out into the interproximal, but on the occlusal part, we want that part to be concave. And on the gingival part, we want that to be convex. So when we pick that up with our, uh, with our pliers and put that in place, the convex part is going to go down towards the gum and the concave part is going to be up facing towards the occlusal. 
Second thing is, is does it matter what side uh, of this by tine ring, what, what the tine, should it be between the wedge and the matrix or should the, or should the wedge be between the tine and the matrix? You know, it doesn't really matter. Either way works. Uh, I kind of just tend to prefer this one by default, but this one can work too. So I guess it really doesn't matter what side those tines go in relation to the wedge. Second thing, these sexual matrices, they can be kind of sneaky in that they might spoon and kind of fit into one another and you can't really see it sometimes. Uh, so what we do in our office is we take and we actually pick them up and we just drop them just, you know, half a foot or so, six, seven inches, just drop it onto the countertop. And if they're together, they will break apart into their separate components uh, right here. This is actually just one sexual matrix. And this is actually a couple of them kind of stacked together where it's hard to see them but they're there. And so that can, you don't want that because you just want to have it as thin as possible. So you have to be careful that these by time rings, you separate them, make sure they are not kind of stuck together. Another point is, is when you're putting the by time ring on, you don't want it to sit on top of the matrix. It needs to go either, you know, one side, either in front of it or behind it, but you can't have it sitting on top. The other point that we can run into is if you're trying to put these these back to back ones, you can run into the situation. If they're too tight together, you know, then when you try to slide them into the space, if there's too tight, you're going to create dimples within the actual matrix. And so here's that dimple right there. If the dentist puts a filling in right there and then takes this apart, that filling is going to have that dimple built into it. And that happens when the space is too tight. It's like right here, that space was too tight. So when we put those sexual matrices in at the same time, they were running into each other and something had to give and it created those little dimples. Uh, so what has to happen is the dentist needs to go in and in most cases has to take this gingival floor and lower it towards the gum line and or go in with like a finishing burr and just kind of create a little bit more space so both of those sexual, sexual matrices can fit in at the same time. Uh, and then here it is, it's, it's it's been widened and now we can put it in and there's no dimple here. There's actually a small one here. And if you run into that, if it's small enough, you can, the dentist can take this burnisher or a plugger of some sort and just kind of rub it smooth to kind of get it to, uh, you know, to not be there anymore. But before the dentist places the filling, that dimple has to be gone. So those are kind of the little tips and tricks in sectional matrices. All right, take care. Thanks.